Intel may have just changed GPUs forever. Let's talk about it. So when NVIDIA revealed their RTX 40 GPUs, they really pushed their new features such as DLSS and now frame generation as not only do these technologies make their GPUs look much better than they actually are, but realistically DLSS 2 in its current form is actually kind of like magic for gaming at 4K. Yes, it's not perfect and can still have some artifacts or ghosting at times, but overall at higher resolutions, DLSS 2 can provide a massive performance increase for a very minor visual downgrade, at least on the quality setting. Frame generation on the other hand has been more of a mixed bag with both Nvidia and AMD struggling to get the latency down because sure it's all well and good to double our frame rates but if the latency is actually higher then that's not only defeating the purpose but actually doing the opposite of what we're trying to achieve with higher frame rates since not only do we want a smoother image but also lower latency so we can react quicker and be more immersed in the game well Intel might have just changed everything with their new approach to upscaling combined with their upcoming battle mage GPUs between in these two upgrades, we could be talking about four times the frame rates of their current flagship GPU and doing this at half the latency of their competitors, which would put them far ahead of both AMD and Nvidia, at least technologically. Now, this information was actually originally posted in what appears to be a white paper that Intel created about how they could be tackling the whole upscaling problem. And a lot of images that I'll be sharing with you guys today come from Hardware Times as well as VideoCards.com articles. Now, Intel's approach seems to be rather than using both a previous and future frame to try and reconstruct and deliver an in-between frame, they're actually just going to go ahead and take the previous frame and try and extrapolate what that future frame could be. Now, of course, the main advantage to this is the lower latency because you no longer have to wait for that frame to complete to then go ahead and try and create a new one. And for example, guys, at 60 frames per second, well, you're going to have roughly 16.7 milliseconds of latency. So if you have to wait 16.7 milliseconds, to then create another frame, well, in theory, your latency might be an additional 16.7 milliseconds, which is a lot of time. And actually, a video from Digital Foundry, I think, kind of backs this up as they did some testing. And as you can see on screen right now, with just DLSS2, which is not using frame generation, they at 100 FPS had a latency of 25 milliseconds. However, when they took that same 100 FPS and then applied DLSS3, which consequently got them 155 FPS, well, that actually had a latency of 35 milliseconds, an increase of 10 milliseconds. Now, some simple math would tell us that 100 frames per second would get you 10 milliseconds of latency. So I think this is roughly a good guide to show us just how much latency there's gonna be. The higher your frame rate, the lower the latency DLSS3 or FSR3 is going to introduce as that frame is being delivered much faster, meaning another frame can also be delivered much faster. But even if you get 120 frames per second, you're still talking about adding an additional roughly eight milliseconds of latency, which again defeats the whole purpose of even trying to get higher frame rates. I mean, sure, it's really cool to see those smoother images, but I'm not gonna wanna play with it if it feels more sluggish. Well, Intel's approach, again, would solve this problem because in theory, if they no longer have to wait for that frame to be completed and they can start working on it immediately as they're working on the current frame, well, they could actually potentially deliver that doubling of frame rate at no additional latency cost. Now, of course, there could be some additional latency cost depending on how long it takes to generate that frame and can it really be done at the exact same time. But in theory, if they're using the AI cores to go ahead and do that, and then they're using the regular raster cores to make the original frame, well, then the additional latency could be zero to very minor if it's all done correctly. And then they also had some other screenshots that showed that they could actually be using upscaling in addition to this to provide an overall better image at much lower latency. So you take all this information and what we're talking about here, guys, again, is double the frame rate at potentially half the latency of what Nvidia and AMD are currently achieving. That is really, really cool stuff. I mean, we're talking about instead of 60 FPS at 16.7 milliseconds, 120 FPS at 16.7 milliseconds. Sure, it's not lower latency, but it is still a better image and you're not having drawbacks. But then you throw in the increases from Battle Mage and we do have to remember that the current leaks and rumors around Battle Mage are suggesting that we're going to be looking at around double the amount of cores and an increased clock speed. As far as I'm aware, they're moving from around 2.4 gigahertz to I believe their current target is around 3 gigahertz. Now, if you do the math on these leaked specs, which you can see on screen, well, we're talking about a GPU that could be 
well over twice as fast as the ARC A770. And if it comes equipped with 16 gigabytes of VRAM once again, or maybe even 32 as either one would definitely be possible and still has some really good memory bandwidth, we're talking about a card that would not only be way, way faster and have a ton more AI performance as leaks are suggesting as well, and some new software such as this new Extra SS, they're calling it their response to frame generation as well as FSR3 with much lower latency, but also it would probably be coming in at a much lower cost as the cost of the ARC A770 seems to be quite low. Let's say they even double that price, well then $500 for a GPU which could be coming close to an RTX 4080 and actually have better AI performance and better software features, well that's pretty good and to be honest with you guys, there's no way it's actually going to cost double the amount to produce this card, so I don't think it's out of the question that they could produce something like this somewhere between $400 to $500. I mean, even $450 for a card like this would be really exciting and a fantastic deal. And with now FSR3 coming to all NVIDIA cards as well, it just looks like whether you're going to be buying NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel, there's a lot of really exciting software as well as hardware coming out pretty soon that I think is going to make the PC space a lot more lively. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that Intel can really do frame generation at no additional latency cost? Or do you think even if it's done, it's going to have have too much warping of the image. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.